everyone. Welcome to a special edition of NFL Live with our eye on the draft just five weeks away. Today, a big part of our focus is on the potential number one overall pick, USC quarterback Sam Darnold throwing at USC's pro day he just started throwing. And so we're going to cover it live throughout the show. Right now, our coverage continues from L.A. Jeff Tarlington leads the way. This the most anticipated of the top quarterbacks as Sam Darnold did not throw at the combine. Jeff, take it away. Well, he didn't throw at the combine, but he is throwing here, starting his throwing session just about 10 minutes ago as the storm clouds look like they're moving in. The fortunate side of this is that we expected rain to be here earlier. It looks like Darnold is going to get the chance to escape that as he does uh, kind of undergo some of his route trees here. Uh, it looks sharp so far, guys, but we're going to be showing you more uh, throughout this show as he gets started out here. Guys, this is, I mean, the pro day has been going well and we got to beat the rain, so that's good. But, hey, he might be playing in Cleveland anyway, so if he's playing in Cleveland, don't we want to see a little bad weather and some rain? And this was actually much to the chagrin of scouts and personnel people who wanted to see him have to throw through some adversity. But the bottom line here, it's, it's just cloud cover at this point. What's the main thing that we're looking from from Sam Darnold today? For me, Susie, it's always about accuracy at pro days like this where – it's set up for him to succeed. Look, he should be very comfortable in his surroundings with wide receivers that he's familiar with, kind of executing a program here that has already been scripted for him. Now, that doesn't mean it won't be challenging, but you expect him to show his best at moments like this, and you expect the ball to not hit the ground on his accord. Now, if receivers drop it or don't run routes properly, that's one thing. But you want to see a guy here, when you're talking about a guy who could be the top pick overall, you want to see him light it up. You want it to see, be extraordinary. And anything less than that, quite honestly, becomes a little bit disappointing. And you know what's kind of cool? You look around, you see all the people. Look over Sam Darnold's right shoulder. There's Mike McCagnan, the Jets' GM in the vest, the Jets having just traded up for the number three overall pick. Spotted there today, the Browns contingent, John Dorsey, Hugh Jackson, Todd Haley, Ken Zampezi, uh, the Giants contingent, Pat Shermer, Mike Shula, the Jets contingent, Mike McCagnan, Todd Bowles, Jeremy Bates, the Cardinals, Steve Kime, Steve Wilkes, Mike McCoy, Byron Leftwich, and the Chargers, Anthony Lynn, Ken Wizard, and all there, all taking in this moment right now. Yeah, no, it, it's, gonna... a, it's a star-studded event. All yeah. 32 teams are represented there today. But, guys, the biggest thing really with Darnold, the, the things that most teams are concerned about, you can't really see at a pro day, whether well, it's turnovers or that kind of a thing. So if, if that's not what we can get out of this, what can we get out of this? I mean, I, this? I think that's the, you hit the point, uh, Susie, when you said, though, the things that is, are his problems, we don't get to learn about today. I got to watch Sam Darnold from field level against Arizona State this year, and I remember the first comeback he throws in pregame. Mm. I look at my son, I say, oh, he got it. Because you saw the ball jump out of, out of his hand. You saw the arm talent. You saw the velocity in the way in which the ball traveled through the air. So I think those things are going to be very evident today. And you heard Lewis talk about – watching a guy throw to receivers he's comfortable with. You watch a guy go through a script on days like this. You're going to still have to go back to the film and, and weigh what you see today, the way he throws the ball, the way he moves around, and what is a scripted day of throwing, compare it to the tape. And do you think that's enough to make him your number one overall draft pick and franchise quarterback? Yeah, what, what's interesting, that, that's a great point. What's interesting to me is a day like today, for me, doesn't – justify whether or not he's worth being the number one pick overall because it's supposed to be set up for you to succeed. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a true test of what, to me, would determine whether or not the guy is number one pick overall. A lot of that has to do with, okay, what do we see on film? Do we like it enough? And can we correct the things that we don't like on, based on how he plays 11 on 11? Because you're right, no one's swatting at him, Susie. No one's doing those kinds of things that he struggled with. Earlier in the day, listening to Jordan Palmer, who's his quarterback coach, he's coached a lot of the top prospects, including Deshaun Watson last year. And he talked about some of the things they've been working on, just mechanics in the pocket mm -hmm. that he is not hunching over, certain things like that. So, so there are some mechanics he's been working on that everyone can take something away. Well, the, other, the other thing I would say is they're all at the pro day, but if the Browns have an interest in Sam Darnold, and they do, they're going to work him out privately. Sure. If the Jets have an interest in Sam, they're going to work him out privately. So, in a way, this, to me, is 
semi-feudal because these teams are going to get to see their guy, the guy that they want, up close and personal. So, yes, he didn't throw at the combine. And so everybody is anticipating this day and this moment right now with Sam Darnold making these types of throws. But the fact of the matter is these teams that are considering him, and it may not be beyond one in this draft anyway, they're going to get their own private look at him to see what they want. Lewis, I have a question, kind of a front office question. When Sam Darnold decides to not compete and to not throw at the combine versus some of these guys we're going to be weighing, weighing him against, how do front office execs and GMs feel about that part of the process, the competitor yeah. part of the process? You know, Ryan, we, we talked about that a lot, too, at the combine. That was a lot of times it's like an annoyance. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're annoyed that he doesn't do it because you'd like to say, hey, look, we know that the combine's not set up for you to succeed because we you don't know these receivers and they run the routes differently at the combine than they're taught mm -hmm. in at actual NFL camps. But everybody's in the same boat. The curtain right. rises to the top. So if you're one of the baddest dudes out here, you're going to wind up looking better than everyone else eventually anyway. They, nobody really gets too mad about it anymore and goes, you know, oh, you know what, we got to check him down on character right. anymore. Because we understand that a lot of this is agent-driven. A lot of this is... Absolutely. Look, I mean, when you have the juice, when you have the leverage, when you know really where you stand, what are you going to do about it? Do that. And he's got the juice. He's got the leverage. Exactly. Now. So it's, a, it's more of an annoyance. Like, right. you would ideally like to see him compete, but if he doesn't, you swallow it and you move on. And I think he goes into this process, I think, as the favorite to be the number one pick. Now, again, we'll see how it shakes out. There's still 36 days left to the draft, and teams will have their private workouts, and they'll meet with these players and do their own tape study. But the fact of the matter is, I think right now going in, He's the favorite, and we'll see whether the Browns go in that direction. And, and Ryan, to your point, one of his top receivers was not able to work out mm -hmm. today. So that's a little bit of adversity to face. In addition to now the rain is falling, which, as we mentioned, this is something that, that scouts and personnel people were hoping would happen. Yep. So he is faced with a little additional adversity for his pro day. So for more, let's send you out to the Cromwell Field, usually home to track and field, but today home to USC's Pro Day, and Jeff Darlington. Well, Susie, I mentioned not but seven minutes ago that the rain was holding off. The rain is now coming down. I am joined by Todd McShay and, and meteorologist Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson. Yes. I was wrong. <laughs> Keyshawn tried to tell me right before, man. I, I don't, don't have it right that the I don't rain smell is it. still far away because he couldn't smell, smell it. it. But hey, we're out here watching Sam Donald right now, and hey, I'm no scout. But he looks pretty good to me. Todd, you tell me, how does he look to you? I haven't, I've seen one throw that was a little bit underthrown and every other throw has been perfectly on time. The, the interesting thing is what Jordan Palmer designed this program to, to be was to get him uncomfortable and to give him throws that were anticipation throws and throwing on the move before, before he's ready and sometimes throwing late. And so he's trying to put him purposely in difficult situations. And we've seen a couple times, Keyshawn, the ball come out real early. And no, it's on purpose because they're designing that as if a, you know, a defender came loose up the middle and he's got, got to get the ball out. And that yeah. happens. And he, I, I don't remember 50 throws in or 40 throws in seeing a guy as deadly accurate at his pro day like we've seen here from Darnold. It's Josh Allen is going to wow people in Wyoming in a couple of days with his big arm, but this has been a, for guys who understand what you're looking to do and accomplish, this has been one of the most impressive pro days from an accuracy and ball placement standpoint that I've seen. You, you look at it, Todd, like you said, just the balls are, are, are all over the place and none are on the ground. Right. That's what you look for in a quarterback zipping the ball, not only in front of his home crowd, but also the weather. I mean, this is not something that he's used to doing, but when you got the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets and the Giants all in the house looking at quarterbacks, he certainly has showcased his skill set as far as zipping the football with accuracy despite not having his lead receiver and Dante Burnett in the lineup for him today, Jeff. And we should point out that there are some big names around the NFL out here. Hugh Jackson of the Cleveland Browns. They hold the number one overall pick. Potential prospect there. The entire Jets brass, including Mike McCagnan, the general manager, Todd Bowles, the head coach, he's out here watching as well. What more can Darnold prove uh, to these scouts, to these teams that he deserves to be the number one overall pick? Well, I, I think at this point, you know, this is nice and it's a good showcase. And I, I know talking to, to Jordan before the workout, that he, they wanted the rain to come. They were rooting for it because it's an opportunity, as you said, Keyshawn, to show teams that play in inclement weather. Cleveland could be the Buffalo Bills moving up, could be the Giants, could be the, and then the Jets picking at number three after their trade re recently. 
they wanted to show that, hey, this Southern Cal kid can throw in the rain. I actually covered him two years ago against Notre Dame, and he threw the ball pretty well in that game, and it was an absolute mm -hmm. downpour. And you haven't seen his accuracy. That ball was dropped, obviously, by the receiver. But you haven't seen his accuracy drop at all from when it was sunny in the beginning of his workout session to the last 20 or so throws where it's been raining. And so, I, to me, this is nice. It's good to see him in the rain. But I, I think the most important part for all of these quarterbacks, whether it's Darnold, Rosen, Allen, Mayfield, is when they go in for their personal visits, their private visits to the facilities of these NFL teams, the Cleveland Browns, the Jets, the Bills, the Giants, how they act, how they retain knowledge, how they perform when put on the board. Because that ultimately, I think so many of these teams are looking at these quarterbacks saying, you know, there's not a huge difference. We like one because of this reason or the, the, like the other because he can do this. But you want to be wowed by a guy when you meet with him privately, and I think that's going to be the biggest key moving the, forward. The private meetings are key because the knowledge level that Sam Darnold has right now is small in terms of understanding the football game and how to play the quarterback position because he's still relatively young at it, where a guy like Josh Rosen, as I said earlier, has more of a Peyton Manning feel. He's the guy who understands everything on the field as far as playing the quarterback position. But that's not to say that Sam can't get up to speed very fast and if you're taking Sam Donald you're not taking him to play immediately because one of the things that you got to have with a guy like that is necessarily protection but guys that are around him to make him better where a Josh Rosen guy if you have those players around him that can really do some things then you can insert him into the lineup immediately because he's been there he's done it a little bit longer than Darnold but I like Sam I I, I just I don't know maybe it's my SC in me and I've watched him for a long time but I like his mechanics I like his footwork I like his head and eyes down the field how he manipulates the football in terms of different route combinations as you alluded to with Jordan kind of putting things together Jordan made sure that this was the best situation for Sam to succeed and not put him in a bad spot. We, we should point out, you guys are referencing Jordan Palmer, brother of Carson Palmer, who does work with Sam Darnold throughout the offseason to get him ready for this draft process. Let's point something out, because the rain is really starting to come down right now. It's pouring. And it's pretty unusual at a pro day, because generally, teams will just go indoors, whether right. it's Michigan. I was in Norman, Oklahoma. That was indoors. Oh, this is pretty unusual. Our real estate is pricey here, yeah, just in case right. you don't know that. <laughs> that's right. They don't have the, the indoor facility to go inside, do they, at all? No, we don't have our indoor facilities probably 30 yards or so, and that's not enough to get everything done right. that you want to get done. So and this was, is a pretty unusual very, opportunity. Very unusual. We'll call it. Exactly. And I mean you look at that throw. I mean, he is these just are, that was a thing dimes. of beauty on the corner out right there. He is he's placing them exactly where you want each ball to be placed. And it is it, I mean it's, this is pouring right Keyshawn, now. Is it raining yet? Uh yeah, Jeff. You got you got me on that one, Jeff. It's <laughs> raining. And it's coming down. This actually looks like something that would be in MetLife Stadium, something that would be in Cleveland in terms of the weather, Seattle, places that you would think that a quarterback from the West Coast can't thrive in, but he's showing the day with his ball accuracy and how his footworks and mechanics. Look at that right there. He drops back on a play action, rolls out, no slippage in anything, and just a dime. I mean, a dime. the passes are on point. The only drops I've seen have been basically when it looks like the ball is slipping out of the receiver's hands. Hey, listen. I'm, I'm the first one to admit that these things can be very much overblown. I think the arm strength sometimes, Jamarcus Russell was the greatest example. It's, I'll, I'll probably never see a pro day work out better than that. And I think Teddy Bridgewater was the worst one I've ever seen. And at that point, people were talking about, well, this guy can't play. What's wrong with him? And we saw the results with both of those guys. But when you talk about accuracy, that's the most important part of playing this p position. And I know there's no defense. I know he's not in pads. But showing here that he can throw the ball and place it wherever he wants in the rain and do it when he's getting the ball out early, I, it's really impressive. It, it's hard not to be impressed. It is, but you, you, you talk about Jamarcus Russell. The one thing about Sam Darnold is the film matches the workout. Yep. And if the workout doesn't match the film, you stay far away from that guy because we've seen workout warriors. We've seen T-shirt All-Americans. We've seen those guys. But if you put in the tape, and I talked to several coaches here, scouts, general managers, if you put in the tape, it jumps out at you. 
the one thing that he has to correct is the turnovers. Yep. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that when you're trying to do too much as a young quarterback, sometimes he comes back to bite hey, you. Listen, Matt Ryan, we said the same thing about him. We said the same thing about Andrew Luck. You can go back in history. There's a lot of guys have had, even Deshaun Watson. We talked about the Deshaun Watson with the, the mistakes. And sometimes it's because you're trying to be a playmaker and force things. Sometimes it's because your you're supporting cast isn't all that good, like was the case with Matt Ryan. And this year, his supporting cast, let's be honest, was nowhere near the cast that he had a year before when they reeled off nine straight wins. And he started forcing things. But we're seeing, we're seeing today, and we saw not flashes, but we saw sustained portions of the season this year where you saw the real Sam Darnold. I, I think this kid's the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think there's any question about it. I think some other guys can do some really good things. But to me, Sam Darnold is, is the guy, and I'll be really surprised come the first night of the draft if the Browns don't select him. Todd, well, we're going to jump in here. Uh, we're going to jump in here with you guys from, from Bristol. Yeah. And, and, and Todd, I was just wondering, I mean, you know, this is a small sample. But, but what did you see just in regard to, we know he's worked on his mechanics, maybe any difference in his mechanics from what you saw throughout the season to right now? Nothing with the arm delivery. Uh, mostly just he's he's keeping a good base. You can see how focused he is on be being balanced. And sometimes when I watch the tape, one of two things happen. He either forces forces a throw because they're behind and they're in comeback mode, or he's gotten a little sloppy with his footwork, and it starts with that base. How you're, how you're lined up and how structurally sound you are. Are you too narrow? Are you falling off? He today, it's very obvious he's been working on that base to get himself into a sound position to throw the football. And if it starts in a sound position, then you got a really good chance to, to place the ball where you want. And Jordan and just it's very difficult, the field. Susie. Yeah, go ahead, Keyshawn. I was going to say, it's very difficult to work on things during the season. When you have the offseason, getting ready for your pro day and all of the things that Todd is talking about with his balance and his base, he can certainly correct that, which he's done, and he's displaying his talent out on the field for us now. Yeah, and, and as I was saying, Jordan just flipped the field, and I'm wondering what is it we should be looking for here because we know one of the things we, we wanted to see from him today, too, is deep ball accuracy. Well, I think you went behind me. It looks like, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong, Jeff, because you're the guy with the weather report. <laughs> it, it seems as though the wind, a little bit of wind is picked up, and they yeah. want to see if it's going east to west, if I'm correct here. No, I was noticing the, the wind as well. Uh, not a weatherman myself, but, I mean, these couldn't <laughs> really be worse conditions for, uh, for Sam to be throwing in, and quite frankly, it still doesn't look like it's impacted him at all. And I know on television, looking at it, you can't really see how hard right. it's coming down. But it's coming down pretty good. This track good. is flooded. Yeah, it's this flooded is like right now. It's training camp in Florida weather, Keyshawn. <laughs> yeah, it, hey, like guys, if you go back, a, a, you go a, back a couple of years, the, the private workout for Jared Goff with the Rams happened in the pouring rain. And that's one of the things that, that won him the job and won him the top overall pick because they watched him handle the ball. Passes were still on target that if he comes through this, we'll always talk about this and remember this, right. as the adversity that Tim Darnold had to face on his pro day. Well, I tell you what, if this well, is the I, only I adversity people have to face, then I like it. If I'm facing <laughs> a little bit of rain, uh, rain in Southern California throwing to my guys, I think I'm okay with that. And we've seen him miss some passes. I think the guys have, have talked a little bit and missed a couple of these passes. We've had some seams that were thrown behind some guys. Uh, there was a, a press out that sailed out of bounds. I think, though, we know even without paying attention today, you know that he has the arm strength. You know he's going to fix the certain mechanical things that he thinks people need to see. I was at Brian Bennett's uh, pro day, who was a transfer from Oregon to southeastern Louisiana, and that was run by Jordan Palmer, Palmer too. He does an amazing job at putting these quarterbacks in the best position to succeed. I think Keyshawn made a great point that it's about what do you get from him as a leader? What do you get from him? as far as an intelligent standpoint and football IQ and understanding when you meet with him. That's what's going to be important for Sam Darnold. The reason he came into the year, as many projected to be the Heisman winner, uh, the, the top overall pick, was because we knew he had those talents. And Adam spoke earlier about him presumptively being the number one pick going into an now, it's because we're not sure about any of the other guys. Mm -hmm. With the way that Sam Darnold played this year, if there was a guy that stepped to the plate and said, you know what, I'm better than Sam Darnold. You know what, I can do some things that he can't. We pick him. We're still not sure about him, and today's not going to show it. The, the interviews are such an important part of this whole process because he's been described as low-key, a little bit more of an introvert, but listening to USC head coach, 
Clay Helton just earlier today. He talked about his, his leadership behind the scenes, how he set the tone for the team, and to quote him, the best one-on-one -on -one leader I've ever seen. That you may not be one of these stand up in front of the team rah-rah guys, but when it comes to talking to your yes. wide receivers, pulling each guy aside, what you need, how you can get better, Helton insisted he's never seen better than that. Which I think is really in the post-combine evaluation phase is probably yes, the most copy. important thing, Susie, because these situations, look, do you remember when pa Paxton Lynch didn't work out in adverse copy. conditions, but Paxton Lynch, Lynch's workout was also pretty good. Mm -hmm. And people were going, man, look how big he is. Man, look how athletic he is outside the pocket. Look how he throws that football. Well, you know what? Guys can work on mechanics all they want mm -hmm. in, in a situation like this, mm -hmm. and it looks perfect. It's a little different when someone just ear holds you. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're in pads, and then you got to get back and do it again. Absolutely. And it's two-minute situation, and you're tired, and you're trying to, you know, call them. Those are the things that, you know, for, for Sam Darnold, if we really spin this thing forward, and you mentioned Jared Goff, right? And that's how what made the difference. What really has made the difference with Jared Goff? Coaching. How he's being coached <laughs> in his relationship, right? <laughs> Coaching. That is what, for all these quarterbacks, yeah. we can sit here and guess and guess and spin and guess and how he's going to look. Tell me where he goes, who's coaching him, mm -hmm. who's around him, and I'll tell you how good he'll be. And we can go through history and look at every quarterback, and that is the case with everybody. When Akili Smith went where he did, who knows what would have happened to Akili Smith if he had been drafted into a program that coached him upright rather than the Cincinnati Bengals. Or if Ben Roethlisberger time. went to the Bengals. Yeah. Right? Correct. I mean, Ben goes into Pittsburgh, it's perfect. We, we have the bus, we, we can run the ball, football, we defense. have a top five defense. Absolutely. It's perfect. There, there's a reason that the Cleveland Browns have had 22 different starting quarterbacks with Joe Thomas playing left tackle. 22 different. They have that's cycled an, through them. That's an incredible number. Okay. It wasn't because he wasn't protecting them, I tell you that. Okay, 22. <laughs> yeah, because he was balling. It's going to be 23 come opening day with Tyrod Taylor and the quarterback that goes to Cleveland. And, again, we'll operate under the assumption right now that Sam Darnold is the favorite, has time to grow because they don't have to rush him with Tyrod Taylor there. So Sam Darnold, or the quarterback that's picked at number one, doesn't have to be hurried along, which is exactly what I think most front offices want to do with their quarterback. Most pro days are designed for perfection. We've seen some balls hit the ground. Some of it can be the receiver. Mm -hmm. Some of it can be the rain. Keyshawn mentioned he doesn't have one of his top targets working out, which I believe was more of a last-minute surprise that he wasn't going to have Dante Burnett as one of his receivers today. But accuracy was never really an issue here. That, that we could say, even if you see some balls hit the ground, not a problem today. Which Absolutely. You no, know, he, he, he can throw the ball. He can place the ball. Uh, we've watched him make all the throws. We've watched him make throws on the move. And earlier they talked about Andrew Luck and his interceptions in college. Also, Matt Ryan had an interception problem in college. And this is what I'll say. It doesn't stop either one of those guys from being successful and showing the talent that they have. But we have seen those turnover woes for both of those guys. Mm -hmm. Guys who have turned the ball over in college in their last years and have seasons where turnovers plague their team and their offenses from being what they could be. We saw that with Atlanta and decision-making with Matt Ryan this year. The years he doesn't have it, they excel. This year, they didn't. So that's still something you have to evaluate as an offense, as offense coordinator, as a head coach, when you're looking at Sam Darnold being your quarterback. Although that throw right there was pretty darn impressive. It was. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what, look, Jordan's putting him in some seriously difficult situations here as far as how long these routes are taking to develop, the, all the movement that he's making him do behind, you know, behind the line of scrimmage before he throws it. And these routes are long developing routes down the field, which quite honestly, that was one of my biggest questions, Ryan, about him on tape was the consistency of him laying balls out over the top of a, of a wide receiver's shoulder and putting it in a nice catch and run situation. So I didn't think he always did that. Now he should be doing it here. I mean, he, he's launching some bombs. Oh, he can slay it now. So, I mean, these, these, this is not, it's good to see him doing this. But again, as much as we like this kind of thing because it's all part of the draft run-up and part of the process, we know when they put pads on your shoulders mm -hmm. and you strap on your helmet and the pass rush and all, whoever takes him, just make sure you have a very good plan for him. It looks like he's done. it's a wrap.
and he looks pretty happy with the performance, doesn't he? Well, he was he was smiling through the whole thing. He knows what he can do. When we when I was at the Arizona State game and they had just beat they had beat Washington, they had beaten Oregon. It was a huge game for them. Sam Bradford steps up in the pocket and throws the ball downfield, and pretty much. Everyone in the stadium knew it was over at that point because they knew USC had a guy physically more talented than anyone on the sidelines for Arizona State. I don't think those things have been a question, but when you know he's immensely talented as he is, you start to wonder why the 22 turnovers, mm -hmm. why the 13 interceptions, why didn't you make who this team who we're saying didn't have the people that you had the year before, but they're still USC. Sure. They're still four and five stars. Why didn't you elevate their play the way we're going to need you to elevate the play of the Cleveland Browns if that's the team that gets you. Notice the quick hug there from Hugh Jackson? Yeah. Sure <laughs> did. Holding the number one pick? Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, potentially. Some of the, the future. Number one overall pick of the 2018 <laughs> NFL draft. And, and that was I'll, the one coach I saw come over and give him a hug. I'll, I'll button it up with this from, it, from Jordan Palmer, who, who scripted this workout. He said, this is a quarterback who can create time and space. And for today's NFL, that's what you want. That should be at the top of the list. Ahead on NFL Live, more coverage from Sam Darnold's Pro Day. What did he want to prove? We'll look forward to hearing from the potential number one over. Basically, last night he had dinner with the Los Angeles Rams. It's a get-to-know-you session. I think in Dominic and Sue, the last time he was a free agent, he didn't go on any visits. He did not tour any NFL cities or organizations. Mm -hmm. This time... He is taking his time to make a decision. He's made a ton of money. Money is not going to be the most important factor. He wants to go to a place where he feels comfortable, where he likes the coaches, where he feels like he'll fit in. I think in a perfect world, you get to play next to Aaron Donald. Right. If that could work out, if the Rams can make it happen, that would be a scary combination. When I heard he was visiting the Raiders yesterday for the first time, I thought to myself, well, this would be a typical move. He is a Raider-type player. Much in the Lyle Alzado mold with some of those hits that he administers out on the football field. But the fact of the matter is, in Dominic and Sue, does not seem to be in any great rush to make a decision at this time. Visiting today with the Raiders, already been to the Saints, already been to the Titans, already been to the Rams. We'll see what he decides. Lewis, the 2010 number two overall pick. How much of a presence is he still? Susie, it's all couched by when he wants to. <laughs> when in Dominic and Sue wants to. And Dominic and Sue can do whatever he wants to on the field, mm -hmm. do whatever guard he wants to or whatever center he wants to. He even can get outside as a nine technique, mm -hmm. being a guy who can rush over a tackle outside shade and bull rush those guys and walk them back to the quarterback too. He could be an absolute game wrecker, but we've also, also seen him put forth less than stellar effort, especially teams that decide to play a physical brand of football, double team him, high low him, which isn't legal, but <clears throat> people who try to get after his legs, chop him down and really frustrate him in the run game. He will shut it down. So what will he give you? I think it's going to be very incumbent upon whatever team signs him to make sure he gets along well with the defensive line coach and the coordinator, and you use him in a way that he likes. Don't try doing what the Redskins did when they had Albert, Albert Hainsworth right. and putting him in a 3-4 and think he's going to two-gap people. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, you don't deserve to actually be in charge of building the football team. Let him get upfield and go and have him be motivated so that he can do whatever he wants. He's that good. And I think that's what's important about these meetings for him. They're not – interviewing in Dominican Sue. He's interviewing them. He's More trying to figure out how, how will I'll, I be used? What do you see me contributing to your team? And that's from a locker room standpoint, but for him more so on the field, what will I do in the nickel package? Mm -hmm. You go with a guy like Aaron Donald, and when you get to four down linemen and five defensive backs, could you imagine figuring out who to double team out of those sure. two guys? But you can't make him a two-gapper. You have to make him a guy who's going to attack and get after the quarterback and put pressure into his face. And the team that tells him you can do that best here mm. and you can also win – is the team that gets him because that's how you keep him competitive. That's how you keep him motivated. Sue, much in demand. We'll keep you posted on his movement as well as other free agency moves as we roll through the second wave of free agency. Still to come here on NFL Live, Sam Darnold will join a long line of USC quarterbacks drafted to the NFL, but based on history, should the Browns take him first? Step into Can we finish what we started? Do we have it in us? Because the second we think we've given everything, we're gonna give more. Because this is our moment, and we are made for this. Whatever you're made for, Gatorade is made to fuel it. Oh, 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 oh. 
The running of the bull dogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There's still time to save at Nissan now. Don't miss big offers on Sentra and Altima, both with automatic emergency braking that could stop for you. Standard on our most popular models. The technology of tomorrow, available today. Time is running out. Save big on our lineup of sedans. It's time for an upgrade. Hurry into Nissan now. Offers end soon. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months on 13 models or save up to 10 to 60 on select models. There are so many choices for identity thieves on the dark web, but you can protect yourself with Experian. Get a completely free dark web scan to see if your identity has already been compromised. Go to Experian.com slash free. Around here, I'm lucky to get through a shift without a disaster. Heads up. Oof. My bargain detergent couldn't keep up. It was mostly water. So I switched to Tide Pods. They're super concentrated, so I get a better clean. I mean, I give away water for free. I'm not about to pay for it in my detergent. Number one trusted, number one awarded. It's gotta be Tide. And for a plant-based clean, try Tide Pure Clean. What do you think? You know we need a bigger closet. Ooh. Yeah, I love it. Zillow. Can we finish what we start? Do we have it in us? Because the second we think we've given everything, we're gonna give more. Because this is our moment, and we are made for this! Whatever you're made for, Gatorade is made to fuel it. Your friend orders a Friday sirloin steak and big ribs. You want to pin with the steak, but add a steak. Figuring steak and steak trumps ribs and steak. But does it? 15 combinations. Steak, ribs, shrimp, and more. Two meats, two sides, $14.99. With TurboTax, you get real live people help. Hi, can I claim a mask as a deduction? Yes, if it's required for work. See? Nothing to be afraid of at all. Intuit TurboTax. Strength, versatility, durability. Turn after turn after glorious turn. Test drive an expert recommended zero turn from America's fastest growing riding mower brand. What can I get you? Cold sore. Grab lunch. Cold sore. When a cold sore takes over, Campho Phoenix topical anesthetic plus antimicrobial action soothes pain fast. What's for dinner? Meatloaf. Campho Phoenix gone. Cold sore pain gone. NBA doubleheader action tonight starts in the land of LeBron and the Cavs hosting the Eastern Conference leading Toronto Raptors at 7 Eastern and then Bradley Beal and the Wizards take on LaMarcus Aldridge and the Spurs. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. In the open fields, an oasis build. It's always been a dream of mine to play in the NFL. Time, molding the crude into the pristine. Being at USC has really prepared me not to ever think of yourself as a backup because if I had the mindset that I was the starter, I was going to be able to prepare as if I was the starter. Refining, rising, surfacing. Under the highest pressure. When the moment is at its biggest, Sam Darnold is at his best. He sees things that other people just don't see. A little Sam Darnold magic. I think Sam could be the best to ever do it. Now, they're ready to be unearthed. Unveiled under the bright lights of the big stage. With the first pick, 
in the NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select. Turning a franchise around is obviously a hard thing to do, but I'm always accepting of a challenge. I think it'd be an amazing thing to do. The central focus of our show today, USC's Pro Day, the headliner, Sam Darnold, a much-anticipated Pro Day for the quarterback who didn't throw at the Combine. Darnold, one of the top quarterback prospects, if not this year's top prospect. All 32 teams represented in a star-studded affair in the rain, and by all accounts, he seemed to be on point today. Now, there always seems to be a lot of hype and build up around USC quarterbacks come draft time. In fact, 18 Trojan quarterbacks have been drafted since the common draft era began in 1967, the most by any school over that span. Of those 18 quarterbacks USC has selected, only one went to multiple Pro Bowls. That would be Carson Palmer, who was drafted number one overall in 2003 after he was the Heisman winner in 2002. And they've struggled to find success in the playoffs Mark Sanchez's four playoff wins are the most of any USC quarterback drafted in the common draft era. All 17 others having combined 4-11 and 11 record as starters in the postseason. After the workout, Sam Darnold joined our crew on site, led by Jeff Darlington. Jeff, take it away. Guys, we are live right now with Sam Darnold, who just came over here under the tent, finally getting a little bit dry. And the first thing he said to us was, that was fun. That was really so fun. So, Sam, yeah. let's start with that. What do you think you were able to accomplish, especially in these conditions? Yeah, it was, uh, honestly, it was just throwing. It was uh, throwing with my guys for one last time. So, uh, it was awesome to be out here. Um, it was cool to be able to get some balls, you know, in the... And when it wasn't raining and then it rained, I think, at the perfect time. So when I started to get a little warm and it was it was really fun to be able to uh, throw with my guys one last time, like I said, and uh, have a good time. How did it go? I mean, you, you obviously with Jordan Palmer, you'd spent a lot of time working on different things. I know the, the base and mechanics and all that. According to what you wanted to accomplish here today, how did you think it went? I thought it went uh, really well, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I think working on those things really showed today. Um, working on those things in the offseason with Jordan um, and also with Ryan Flaherty, working on my hip mobility, um, being able to use my hips more uh, when I throw. Um, it was awesome to just be able to come out here and use those and use those tools, what I've been working on, and be able to use it and have fun and rip it today. Having the opportunity to possibly be the number one pick overall, as you continue to evolve in this situation, even today and all the scouts around, mm -hmm. in the back of your mind at all, given the recent history of USC quarterbacks going on to the National Football League, we've gotten a knock at that position. Do you feel any uncertainty of being the number one overall pick based on those sort of things? No, no, it's a, it's a different situation. Um, I'm just going to be myself, whatever organization I go to. Um, I'm going to be myself and lead in the way that I lead, play the way I play. and. If it works, it works, and I think it will. Um, I really believe it will, and um, I'm excited to to be a part of a team again because uh, it's been a long time, you know, studying my own tape, and which is good. It's good to be able to be your uh, be your worst crit critic, but uh, it's been it's been really fun. But at the same time, I want to I want to get with a team and. Uh, start throwing with some more guys. Sam, speaking of teams, uh, Hugh Jackson was out here. The Jets brass was out here. What teams have you uh, maybe had the most contact with and, uh, yeah. and kind of gotten a vibe for? Yeah, so I, I've had meetings and dinners the past couple days. Um, two days ago, I met with the Giants, um, had a meeting and a dinner, and then I met with the uh, Browns last night. So it's been really fun. Those are the only two teams that I've, that I've had really, like, official meetings with and uh, dinners with. So, But it's it's been really fun. Do you... Obviously, the money is better if you pick first than if you pick second. <laughs> yeah. So that, but do you, is it the competitor in you? Do you want to be the first pick? Um, I want to be picked by the team that wants me. Um, you know, it'd be it'd be awesome to go number one, um, just because I think what the Browns are doing are, is really good right now. Um, I think they have potential to be a really good team yeah. in the future. So, um, just based on that, yeah, a part of me really wants to go one. Uh, but at the same time, if if they don't want me and they don't pick me, that's the best situation because. You know, I don't, I don't want to go to a team that doesn't want me. Do you feel like maybe, a quarterback especially, do you feel like maybe you go to a situation where you sit and you wait a little bit where there's a veteran quarterback that you can learn the NFL game from, and let's say maybe your second or third year, Aaron Rodgers, like, take mm -hmm. over the controls and lead a team down the field to a victory? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely different ways of doing it. You can go in as a rookie and uh, play really well, um, and then you can also sit, sit for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, which is what I did here. I sat for a year. 
um, under Cody Kessler when he was balling out here. And um, I thought that was the best thing for me just because I got to learn the playbook, you know, in depth. Um, and then I was able to get my reps on the practice field. And I think that really showed my redshirt freshman year when I came out and did what I did. So, um, you know, there's definitely, there's two ways of looking at it, but I think either way I'll be uh, successful. Will you have more workouts individually with individual teams moving forward or is this it? Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I think we're going to figure that out um, in the future. Maybe probably right after I get done with this interview, so uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Sam, I don't want to just gloss over the fact that you mentioned the Giants and having dinner with them, and I don't know that many people have really thought of them at that number two spot as the team that could go after a quarterback. Do you get a sense that you're still in play there? I mean, you know, I, I just I'm going to dinner, I'm going to these meetings. And just, I'm, <laughs> they invite you. I'm you trying, go, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to impress them and doing what I can, but. Um, I don't know what their plan is. Um, you know, it seemed like they were very intrigued when we were having dinner and all that, but, you know, I'm, to be honest, I don't know. Good restaurants? Good restaurants, oh, yeah. Good. Downtown right. LA. That's all so. that really matter. Yeah, yep. Well, Sam Darnold here with us, Susie. Let's go back to you in the studio. John, <laughs> good to hear from Darnold. Obviously, seems very pleased as we welcome you to the Verizon film room. There have been plenty of dinners. There's plenty of <laughs> chat. Do you think he is a legitimate number one overall draft pick? Yeah, I do, by virtue of the fact that the Browns have to take a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because when we look at this, like the overall ranking here of the players, I don't think he's going to be number one overall when you align them vertically and like align the top 100 prospects. He's not going to be number one on most people's board. Right. But he's going to get elevated because the circumstances dictate, look, we have to take him. We have mm -hmm. to take a quarterback. We passed on so many. And although that doesn't seem like a very natural way to do things, they're going to do it that way. And he's one of the guys who right now is probably the one who people believe has the highest upside, and maybe he does. So, I mean, if we're, if we're looking at it, you pencil him in there. Now it gets interesting from Absolutely. there because what did they just say? He just said, I had a dinner with the Giants. The and Giants. The, and I went, And Oof. the Browns. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah. what, does that have, what does that mean for the number two slot? That number two slot is all of a sudden where I thought, okay, I, I kind of know where this is going, which is where I would think that that's going to go. I'm not so sure if that's the way it goes anymore. See, right. Again, I'm not so sure anymore. So it's. Um, I think. I think. I think the number, the right number two. Who knows spot, if they're even there? Right. And the number two spots. The number two spot gets interesting because you know why the New York Jets moved up. They're going to want a quarterback, and that also puts pressure on the Browns because then you think to yourself, does somebody pull a Mitchell Trubisky and get the number two spot if we go with the best overall player, who is Saquon Barkley? And so this thing is a, it's a chess match, and I think after the Browns make that pick, we'll see other pieces fall into place that may surprise us. You just had a little twinkle in your eye when I said that. So what were you <laughs> thinking right there about the number two? When I said, do they go here? And you were like, mm -hmm. you know what's funny, Lou? We've known each other long enough to know <laughs> yeah. that you can look in my eye and know what I'm thinking. All of his twinkles, all of his twinkles are backed by information. They're never guessing. They have not, they're not finished moving around. Would right. you well, agree? Yeah, there you go. There is exactly. more movement to come. Yeah. I think that that is entirely possible. We know of other teams that will want to get up here. And, again, Sam Darnold said the Giants had dinner with him on Tuesday night, uh, Monday night. So let, let's just advance this forward. There's been some chatter that the Giants might like Sam Darnold. What if the Cleveland Browns liked, hypothetically, Sam Darnold and Josh Allen and Sam Rosen equally, and they said to the New York Giants, we're, we're going to take Sam Darnold, one, unless you want to give us a second-round pick or a first-round pick, and mm -hmm. we'll swap spots with you. I'm just throwing this out there. No, you're not. You're, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm just telling you. Every, every, every you know twinkle my, is my, backed by information. My birthday is March 21st, 2018. <laughs> I'm just saying, all of a sudden, there could be some jockey. Sure. What if the Jets want to come back up even higher sure. yeah. to lock in a guy that they wanted? And of course, Buffalo, where are they? And at? Buffalo where and Arizona. Here. And I but think you know, I think that's the but that's the big thing about this draft and what's confusing and actually exciting about it. You don't know who people want. There's not that guy. There's not that guy that scouts are saying is the next John Elway or is the next Dan Marino. We're still trying to figure these things out. And let me say this: we, we are 36 days away. Mm -hmm. 36 days out of last year's draft, did anybody concoct a scenario in which the Bears were trading up for a quarterback, Absolutely the Chiefs not. were trading up for a quarterback, and the Texans were trading up for a quarterback? 36 seconds before no. the draft. And I was going to say, hey, <laughs> yeah. the Bears did it on the clock. Yeah, no. 36 seconds. And so to think that we're done seeing sure. movement, I think, would be a bit naive. But, again, I agree with you on, the, on, on, on Sam Darnold at one. I think that that right now is the way it shapes up. 
and we'll see how it shakes out. Before we go, let's put Baker Mayfield in this mix too. Sam Darnold mentions dinner and workouts with two teams. Where has Well, Baker as Chris Mayfield Morris said been? today, the Miami Dolphins are putting Baker Mayfield through a private workout today. And again, you can't read too much into a private workout other than the team obviously has some interest. And so the Miami Dolphins are drafting, I believe, number 11 this year. If you're not mistaken, let's go, go through there low and find the Miami. There they 11. Are. Number 11. They are in a position that's a perfect team where we've Hill. seen teams go up from right in that range. I believe when the Rams traded up, they were in the middle of the first round and they came up to 16. number one. Mm -hmm. The Eagles started at 13, went to eight and finished at two. So there's no reason if the Dolphins, as aggressive as they are, and we know that they are aggressive, couldn't make a move up. The Bills, Bills. at 12 Absolutely. could make a the move Cardinals. up. The, yeah, I mean, listen. I see what you're doing here, Susie. Build the suspense. <laughs> but it's real. It's, it's real. There, huh? It's real. But, I mean, that, that, that is what makes it interesting here. I mean, because if Sam Darnold does go off the board number one overall, I mean, does that mean that somebody like – Hey, I mean, let me say this. I hey, Lou, Lou, from the moment that right. happened, exactly. but then what happens here? Does Baker Mayfield Lou, go there? Lou. Then does my man go here, who's actually the best player in the draft? You just get picked. Lou, forward. I'm just telling you this right now. From the moment the Jets moved up in this draft, the Bills started it and went to number 12 by trading Cordy Glenn to Cincinnati for that spot at number 12. The Jets continued it going to number three. And it was just obvious to anybody at that time that there's a real chance, if not a probability, that the first three players picked in this draft yeah. are going to be quarterbacks. Now, no. I know people keep saying the Giants can't pass up Saquon Barkley. They can't do that. Hold on, I've been, I've been saying that. Okay. I think they can. Well, I think they can, too. Well, they can. I mean, if you look, if you look at this draft, <sighs> some boy, of the, boy. to me, the, the best players, the, the, the Saquon Barkleys, and some of these guys are going to get passed on because of position. Lou spoke to it earlier about how badly these teams need quarterbacks. It's going to it happen last year. It's going to artificially alter people, the rankings. But, and, by the way, and by the way, and by no the way look, look, if I could just show you this, if, the, if the quarterbacks go one, two, three, like you put them out in whatever yeah. order, okay, Cleveland's sitting there. Oh, we're thrilled to get Saquon Barkley. The Broncos are sitting there. We could take Bradley Chubb or Quentin Nelson. Right, right. The top Colts could take whoever. The draft is still there. So all of a sudden, the <laughs> Broncos are really excited. Exactly. exactly. It's, it's really, really, it's really excited. funny that you know because of how quarterback the dynamics work, we, we have guys about. like these guys yeah. who are going to be better players. They're, they're just going to be Bradley better pros. Chubb. Alabama safety. They're going to be Think better pros. Patrick yes. could be one of the top players in the entire draft, still sitting. But yeah. the, but the, but they're going to slide down I, a notch or two just because of the value of quarterbacks. It happens every year. It's going to happen again this year. I think it also happens with these guys because they're all lumped together. There's no guy sitting on the top of the mountain that these other guys are chasing. It's going to be I think there's, there's, how do you see them? And, and there's, there's like, some unique situations here with Cleveland and with the Jets in particular. Like, they have no choice. Right. You just have to do it. Whether or not they were ranked 10th overall on your board or 15th on your board and you had 14 guys ahead of these quarterbacks, they've got to take one. This is fun. We it just is fun. sit here with this board. 36 more days of it, Susie. I'm just glad you guys are It's a fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of intrigue for this year's draft. Ahead here on NFL Live, the offseason has been filled with transactions, big free agent signings. Which newlywed, newly signed player was the smartest addition? Case fires. Caught! Touchdown! What a beautiful pass by Kirk Cousins. Alex takes the snap. Got it! Post! Touchdown! Minnesota Vikings. That'll be a landmark deal for Kirk Cousins. Some big news out of Green Bay. Gone is Nelson. In is tight end Jimmy Graham. They were looking for offensive playmakers. Tremaine Johnson will get big money in the big city. Eddie Bridgewater reportedly planning to sign a one-year deal with the Jets. The moves are rolling right now. Joining a new NFL team is like a marriage. Some work out and some don't. And welcome to the newly signed game. We'll start with the Washington Redskins, who we know traded for Alex Smith during Super Bowl week, moved on from Kirk Cousins. So, Adam, you start us off just from a money standpoint. How does this work out for the Redskins? Well, take a look at the contract that they gave Alex Smith. They gave him less than they would have had to pay Kirk Cousins. Alex Smith came in about $23.7 million a year. Kirk Cousins, $28 million a year. The Washington Redskins save money in that particular spot that enables them to go out and make other moves 
Vikings spend top dollars to Kirk Cousins, but that's what it costs to get the 29-year-old quarterback off the free agent market. So, Lewis, from your perspective, are the Redskins better off, worse we look, off? We looks way too happy to answer this question. I'm just waiting for her to finish <laughs> so I can get started. <laughs> no, no, they're not better off. Alex Smith had a career year, and I don't think it's a flash in the pan. I think this is a guy who right now is the best deep ball thrower in the National Football League. The statistics bear it out. He's one of the most cerebral quarterbacks in the National Football League, one of the most athletic quarterbacks in the National Football League. And I think he's one of those people who, when it comes down to critical situations in this offense, when you're talking about two-minute situations, red zone situations, scoring situations, because he is a dual threat who can run and throw, I think he has elevate. I think he will elevate. So they are better. The so they are better are, off. I was looking for a, a butt there. There is yeah, no butt. They are better so they are, off. So the Redskins are oh, better okay, off. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did I say they're not better off? Okay, we're so okay. anxious. I'm sorry, I was so anxious he to talk so about my guy. I, I almost said the wrong thing. I got I love confused. Alex Smith, you're the man. I okay, like we're back. They right, are better off. Ready to reel this back in, Miss Susan. I do. That's why I, she's, I think that's they're why better she's off. the best. I think they're better off for money reasons as well. But also, this back and forth that you've had with Kirk Cousins, is he my guy, is he not? The type of relationship that can build between a team and a player, you get a guy that can do all the things that Kirk Cousins can, and you get him for a better price and a relationship going forward that will be a good one. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay, and we'll do better. We'll get I, I, will, we'll do I will be better off on this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely a case of do you like chocolate or vanilla? <laughs> Minnesota Vikings, they move on from Case Keenum, who led them to the NFC Championship game. They signed Kirk Cousins, Adam, from a money standpoint. And Susie, let's look at the contract. Let's roll in the figures. What Case Keenum got from the Denver Broncos, what Kirk Cousins got from the Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins considerably more. The Broncos got Case Keenum at more than $10 million less per year than Kirk Cousins. So in this particular case, you take a look at the numbers. Two years, $36 million on Case Keenum. Kirk Cousins, three years, 84. That enables Denver to go out and make some other moves that it can during free agency. Ryan, so now we're asking, so now off? we're asking, are the Vikings better off? Better off. Worse You're doing off. right. They're better off. And listen, I know Lou. He might be upset with this. Case Keenum got. You know what he got? He got. I don't know money because the whole time he's with the Vikings and they were winning games, they didn't know. This but is that the doesn't same, mean you this don't is know. The same money that Brock Osweiler got because the Houston Texans, they didn't know either. Kirk Cousins, this is what's going to happen. Wait a second. This is gonna, what's going to happen. Wait when, Mike a Zimmer, second. when Mike Zimmer steps to the podium after the game, they are not going to ask him about quarterbacks. Wait He's a second. He's going to be sure who his quarterback is. And Kirk Cousins doesn't have to carry this team. So from a quarterbacking standpoint, from a stability standpoint, Kirk Cousins is a upgrade, and the Vikings are now Did you compare Brock Osweiler to Case Keenum? I did. Brock Osweiler hasn't ever put up stats like Case Keenum. Maybe but in has, Madden but he has. has, has Maybe he's playing a video game, but he's never put up hey, stats hey, like Case Keenum hey, has no, in real football. Hey, no. This is the night that the fairy – this year was the night that the fairy godmother came down and he turned Case Keenum into a steed. You know what I mean? He was a stallion. So what you're saying And then is, when he played in Philadelphia, it was 12 o'clock, and he oh, no wait a minute. Wait, 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 he wait. was the dude Brian, that he was Brian, all his career Brian, before that. That is not true. That is not true. That's not true. That's not true in that game. And now you're being – hold on. Hold on. Time out. You're letting one year. Case Keenum, Case Keenum was a jag. That is not true in that career, game. And then I That's got not a true in that game. That's not true in that game. Okay. Remember the first drive of that game? He was very good. It was awesome. Very, was, okay, what, what, what happened? What happened on his pick corner. six? What happened on his pick six? Great pressure. He had his arm hit. He's great pressure. What happened on his sack fumble in the red area? Blocking pressure. scheme error. Got stuck. Lou, 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 he was Lou, not a Lou, jag in that game. It was a jag. He was not a, just a guy. We're gonna see. It was just we're a guy. Gonna see. We're gonna see what that guy right there behind you. Over here. We can see whatever. No question. We're gonna see what that guy behind you right there. There was no way to Let's see what he does. Up, Adam, what do you mean he's getting he's better, better over here? Well, I'll tell you that. He better go up. This guy right here better go up too. Well, Kirk, his play better go up, especially Kirk in the red area. Kirk is who he is. Better go up. He is who he is. But he's better than Casey. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. I like this, folks. I like this. He endured three prove it seasons. By the way, that never ends. It never ends. You, oh, you're right, especially when you have 84 million guaranteed. Now the pressure is really <laughs> hey, on. Hey, pressure might be up. Still Maybe coming. Ain't stressed. <laughs> so many teams making big off-season moves. We'll take a look at the Bears' new additions and how that may affect Mitchell Trubisky's sophomore jump or slump. Right. <laughs> Dear foremothers, your society was led by a woman who governed thousands. 
commanded armies, yielded to no one. When I found you in my DNA, I learned where my strength comes from. My name is Courtney McKinney, and this is my Ancestry DNA story. Now with five times more detail than other DNA tests. Order your kit at AncestryDNA.com. Smoked brisket on Texas toast. Does it get any more Texas than this? Okay, that's ridiculous. The new Texas brisket. Arby's, we have the meat. Sometimes we imagine things far worse than they truly are. But we take a deep breath and we do our taxes with TurboTax. Now a CPA can review your return with you. Am I getting a maximum refund? I checked it, ma'am. You're good to go. See? Nothing to be afraid of at all. Hello? Intuit TurboTax. Today, let's do this. Text your friends. Where's my phone? Update your status. Maybe change your status to stuck in a video game? Maybe. Jumanji, you can watch it at home with your friends. Snap to unlock the augmented reality experience. Rated PG-13. At Safe Flight Auto Glass, we know that when you're spending time with the grandkids, every minute counts. And you don't have time for a cracked windshield. That's why we show you exactly when we'll be there. Saving you time so you can keep saving the world. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Rich. Is that a new SUV? It's a new Buick Enclave. Oh, Hunter's playing lacrosse now. Yep, on Tuesdays. Monday's soccer. Wednesday's basketball. Thursday's hockey. Friday's taekwondo. Is that a curling stone? Saturdays. Saturdays. Introducing the all-new Buick Enclave. Tomorrow's SUV for today's family. It's March Madness. Current lessees. Switch to Buick and get this low-mileage lease on this 2018 Enclave for around $3.99 per month. What if theft were this frequent? Well, it is. An identity is stolen every two seconds. So protect yourself with a free dark web scan at Experian.com slash dark web. Hey, salute a lot. Thou has the patchy beard of a prepubescent squire. <laughs> <laughs> Thy armor was forged by a feeble fingered peasant woman. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum! As long as hecklers love to heckle, you can count on Geico saving folks money. Boring. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Unstop right there. I'm about to pop a cap of mmm fresh in that washer with unstoppable in-wash scent boosters by Downey. Oh, it's so fresh. And it's gonna last from wash to wear for up to 12 weeks. Unstoppables by Downey. Having a sweet tooth is a killer. But today, Atkins has these Harvest Trail Bars. Dark chocolate, sea salt, and caramel. I go through quite a few of these babies. Rich in protein, lower in net carbs, and no added sugar. And they're Atkins, a small miracle. season with one dream a dream we've shared since we first picked up a basketball as March beckons we ask ourselves a similar question what about, what about the believers South Carolina has won the national championship the legends the heroes the NCAA women's basketball championship presented by Capital One Sweet 16 begins Friday the NCAA Women's Championship continues Friday at 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN with Sweet 16 matchups. Mississippi State, NC State, then Louisville squares off against Stanford. All games are streaming live on the ESPN app. Let's talk New Look Bears, a team being reconstructed to support the growth of their second-year QB, Mitchell Trubisky. The number two overall draft pick started the final 12 games last season, four wins, eight losses creating a ton of experience for new head coach and respected offensive mind, Matt Nagy, to work with. 
So here's what the quarterback had to say about their free agent additions, including three new pass catching weapons. Quote, it's very exciting, and I can't be more thankful for the situation I ended up in, especially with GM Ryan Pace running the show and really believing in me, this organization, and the other guys we have. We did really well in free agency. We have to get a couple of other guys back healthy, but I just feel like we're in a perfect situation to really emerge and have a great year this year. Well, the Bears have been moving and grooving this offseason. After the firing of John Fox, Chicago hired Matt Nagy to become the 16th head coach in Bears history. Nagy spent the past five years in Kansas City and was promoted to OC before the 2017 season. Big priority in free agency was to get Trubisky some weapons to throw to. So the Bears signed wideout Allen Robinson in free agency. Robinson logged 20 touchdowns from 2015 to 2016 and looks to bounce back from a torn ACL that he suffered in week one last year. They also added former Eagles tight end Trey Burton, who was ready to take up a starting role. If you remember, it was Burton who threw the touchdown to Nick Foles on the second quarter trick play in Super Bowl 52. Add wide receiver Taylor Gabriel to the mix as well. As we say hi to NFL Nation Bears reporter Jeff Dickerson. Jeff, we saw a ton of creativity from Nagy's talent-laden offense in Kansas City. So how much of that can we expect in Chicago? You should see a lot of that in Chicago, Susie, because Nagy's expected to run a similar system that he took from Kansas City here to the Bears. In fact, Doug Peterson took that system with him from KC to Philadelphia a couple of years ago. So I would expect a lot of crossover between those three teams. The buzzword this offseason, though, for the Bears has been mismatches. They're trying to create a lot of mismatches to help out Mitchell Trubisky. Allen Robinson is 6'3". That's going to be a problem for smaller cornerbacks. Now, Burton, Trey Burton, a very intriguing guy at tight end. Nagy spent a lot of time around Travis Kelsey in Kansas City. You know, Burton's not the same player yet, but he's going to be their move tight end, their U tight end. He's going to be outside, inside, in motion as an H-back, again, to create those mismatches. Same thing with Taylor Gabriel. And they still have Tariq Cohn, who a lot of people have compared to Tyreek Hill, who, guess what? Nagy coach for several years in Kansas City. So you can see on paper how this could all come together offensively. Very interesting. And we know that the Bears have the number eight overall pick in next month's draft. So where might they be leaning? Susie, they're in very good shape here, especially if those quarterbacks get pushed up because the Bears aren't going to take a quarterback in the top 10. A player that makes a lot of sense for them is Quentin Nelson, the very talented guard out of Notre Dame. The Bears hired Harry Heastand this offseason to coach their offensive line. He was Nelson's offensive line coach at Notre Dame. Bears have an obvious deed on their offensive line with the team declining Josh Sitton's option a couple of weeks ago. Also, Tremaine Edmonds from Virginia Tech also could make some sense. They need help there at inside linebacker, and they still need pass rushers if they believe that Edmonds, who played inside in college projects to be maybe an outside backer in that 3-4 defense. Mm, but I like how you connected the dots to the player widely considered the best offensive lineman in this year's draft. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so the Bears, we know, could be one of these teams to emerge with a young QB. Adam, who else? Who else might be emerging in 2018? A team you look at is a team that finished last year strong. You always go back one year and you see who ripped off a winning streak at the end of the previous mm -hmm. season. The team that did that last year was the San Francisco yep. 49ers. And they did it with Jimmy Garoppolo playing quarterback. I mean, you've got Garoppolo out there, and then you mix in some other moves like Jarek McKinnon at running back, like Weston Richburg along the offensive line, like Richard Sherman in the secondary. And you heard Jeff Dickerson talk right there about how a good player will select to the Bears turn at eight. The same is true for the 49ers turn at number nine. Lewis. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stick with the Chicago Bears, man. I really do think they are one of those football teams that on paper it looks good, but it does make sense. And you heard them you heard them just kind of like really connect the dots here as far as why you can get these kinds of free agents up to speed because there's so much familiarity. Matt will be able to go into OTAs now and really start implementing the offense at an advanced rate, which only is going to help them come September. You see that dude running on the field right there, Susie? He's back. That is Aaron Rodgers, and he's back. You guys are forgetting about the Green Bay Packers. And I know we're talking about Garoppolo and Trubisky, but let's be real. You can stand those two on top of each, of each other's shoulders, and they aren't Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is back. He has a new red zone threat. There's also a new defensive coordinator, so they can add to that side of the football when it was getting stale with Dom Capers. I look for the Green Bay Packers to be back atop the NFC North this season. They emerged 10 years ago. 
Well, they're emerging again, Adam. <laughs> we talking about lashes. What have you done for me lately? Okay. And it's fun to Gosh, watch them Adam, operate with a back. new philosophy under a new GM yeah. and Brian Gutekunst, right? Oh, very aggressive. All these new offseason additions. It's very unpacker-like, but it they was. have been aggressive. And he's going to have to be because this, this division looks tough. Mm. The Packers with a bunch of draft picks, an NFL most 12. Oh. And Sony Michelle. I'm here with Lewis Riddick. What can you tell us about these two prospects? Well, I'll tell you what, look, Nick Chubb is a stud now. I mean, he is put together, just rocked up up top, better speed than you would think. You know, he only ran about 454, 452 at the combine. When you watch him on film, though, you don't see Nick getting run down from behind. Physical force. Exactly. And, and Sony's a little bit smaller, about 215, but they kind of run similar. These guys are downhill slashers. When you think about them, you would, you would love to see them in a Kyle Shanahan type of offense. The one cut and go zone scheme that they could really get the ball north and south. They're just studs. I mean, they, they feed off of each other. They fed off of each other so well at Georgia. They were a perfect complement. But there's still there is separation with these guys when you compare them to Saquon because he has a Saquon Barkley, Barkley exactly he has a different level of home run speed and he has a pass catching ability and route running ability out of the backfield that you just you just don't see I mean it's just as natural as can be now these two guys can catch the ball they will be serviceable third down players but they're not going to be difference makers but I'll tell you this as far as second day values. They're going to be off the charts. And we've seen how those kinds of running backs, so as you get them in the right situation, they absolutely pay dividends for football teams. You don't have to draft running backs high. I know that. And these are two guys who are going to be examples. But, look, this, this is a different year, just like it was for Ezekiel Elliott. People didn't want to believe that he would go top ten and he'd be worth that. He's been worth that and more. Saquon will be the same. These guys have nothing to hang their, hat about, uh, hang their head about, though, because they are studs. I love watching these two guys run. In general, this draft class for running backs, how would you evaluate it? Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's got a little bit of everything. We haven't even talked about Darius Geis. Yes, who's one of the toughest guys that you will see. Who's a guy who right now, if people said, hey, strap on a helmet and see if you'll come downhill and hit this guy, I'd be like, no, thank you. A lot of these guys are like this. Yeah, so it's going to be a great year for second day and third day running backs that if you do your scouting right and you have a great role selected for them, you're going to look pretty good as a team builder with the class of running backs coming out this year. A little something for everyone Absolutely. in the running back department and this April's draft in Arlington, Texas. Ahead, the NFL's director of officiating is tweeting out about the catch rule and the changes that could be in store. We'll analyze that when we come back. Your vice president of officiating, Al Riveron, regarding the ever-debated catch rule. After much deliberation and input from coaches, players, NFL legends, and club executives, the NFL Competition Committee will recommend the following language, simplifying the catch rule at the annual meeting next week. Number one, control. Number two, two feet down or another body part. Three, a football move such as a third step, reaching, extending for the line to gain, or the ability to perform such an act. Guys, what do you think? How's this hit you? I don't understand number three. The ability, the ability to perform such an act. To perform such an act. Is that like they got to guess if you could have reached you across? Yeah, See, that, I don't like that one. Yeah, I don't need that. The first I like. two I was good The with. first two were really good. Like, you know, control. Like, we I, actually want to see you have the ball. That makes sense. Like, I, sure. I get that part. And reaching over the line, obviously, that goes back to Jesse James or the fact that we were even reviewing the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, once Ertz reaches over the line. So I think those two things are good. Uh, but trying to figure out what the ability to perform such an act is is difficult for me. And, again, it's it's – it's language that they say they're going to work on. So some of these things can yeah, still, still be ironed out. And we'll right, discuss it next week at the owners' meetings in Orlando. But I do, I do, I really do like the fact that they are really putting in the time to yes. simplify this. Oh yeah, that is. I mean, it's gotten all. They're putting off in the, the time this offseason, so we don't have to talk about it next season. Right. On Monday morning. So you don't have to talk. Right. <laughs> you hated talking about. You mean I, every Monday morning? Like, <laughs> like the biggest, too. the yeah. biggest thing is though, like the rule, the rule was simple. It was just stupid, right? Like, like, when, like, I used to be able to watch the game and, like, you could see a play, and because of the way the rule was written, you knew that like, they were going to – but it's not a catch. Right, they knew they were going to yeah. rule it, rule that it wasn't a catch. It was just a dumb rule. The, it, it, no, it, it was the whole survive the ground. Right. You, you got to survive mean? the ground. Absolutely. Let's wrap this up where we started with Sam Darnold's Pro Day mm -hmm. at USC. We talked about it being a star-studded event. All 32 teams represented. Did you notice anything maybe just a little different? Well, I, I saw USC football 
posted a picture on Twitter that had the Browns owner, Jimmy Haslam, sitting hmm. with Sam Darnold's parents during hmm. the pro day. I don't recall the last time I saw an owner sitting with the wow. parents. Oh. And I think that tells you an awful lot about what the Browns' mindset might be right now. Hmm. They weren't chilling with Saquon's parents. They just <laughs> nobody. That was loved me. I was the only one chilling. That's a wrap for us. <laughs> Stay 